I went against everything I stand for in June. That's being dramatic. It's not like I read only romance until I liked it and filmed a whole video on it that'll be going up sometime this month. <sighs> Hello everyone, my name is Holly and in today's video I'm going to be showing you all the books that I read in June. Now June was one of the first months this year where I truly set myself loose and went all in on the random mood reading. I think I was reading like three books at once at one point, which is so unlike me, but I gave in. I went with the flow. If I was feeling something different one day, even though I had just started a new book I was enjoying the day before, I picked up a different book and it just worked for me. I finished everything Thing that I started in the end, which is all that really matters. We are also officially halfway through the year. Don't ask me how, because I have no idea how that happened. I read a total of four books, which is a little below average for me, but I'm not worrying about the quantity, only quality, and I think I read some great books this month. But before I tell you what worked for me this month and what didn't, I'd like to thank BetterHelp for being a big supporter of this channel and sponsoring today's video. Now, I know therapy can be really intimidating, but it is really important. If you're going through a difficult period or if you're looking for an outlet, BetterHelp can pair you with the perfect therapist. All you have to do is go to their website, answer just a few questions, and BetterHelp connects you with a licensed therapist who is trained to listen. The best part is all of this happens from the comfort of your own home. Maybe even being in a chair just like this. You can do it all from your phone or computer via phone call, um, video chat, or messaging. However you feel the most comfortable. It's the easiest possible way to start talking to a therapist. You select what's best for you. So just visit betterhelp.com slash hollyheartsbooks right now and enjoy 10% off your very first month of therapy. Thanks again, BetterHelp, for working with me today. Let's talk about the first book I picked up in June because I couldn't stop thinking about it when it was first announced. Hell for Hire. Now, you might recognize the author, Rachel Aaron, who wrote The Legends of Eli Monpress, which was published by Orbit many years ago. She recently um, released a novel which she offered me to read. I took that opportunity immediately because I think this is such an amazing cover and I'm so glad that I read it because this is such a fun addition to the urban fantasy genre. Um, the whole vibe and humor reminded me so much of Men in Black and Hellboy. Mix those two and you have have hell for hire. We have our main character who is a witch with a cat and a talking broom. Um, he's hired this trio of demons who he meets at an airport for the first time, which is such a funny scene. They all have such bright personalities and really bring the novel to life, but he hires them to protect him from being abducted by a warlock. Um, they have their own camper that is being driven by a little old lady. If you want something funny, you've got to give this a try. The magic system in this was also really re interesting and really refreshing. Humans are magic blinded so they can't see like um, our group's giant horns or devilish tails. I cannot wait for the rest of the series. After a string of DNFs recently, this was a huge mood booster and I gave this five out of five stars. And then afterward, I was looking through my bookshelves for what to read next and this book stood out to me. The Invocations. This is a YA book that I would highly recommend to those of you who enjoyed Ninth House. Um, we have three female main characters, Emmer, Jude, and Zara, and they all have their own story, their own demons to battle, but they all um, interconnect in a way. In fact, all three of them grace the front cover. Essentially, the story centers on these three young women banding together to try and find this supernatural serial killer who is going after female witches. Immediately right off the start, it was exactly what I wanted. It was giving what was needed to be given with the dark academia atmosphere. I loved how brutal and bloody and outright disgusting it was. One of the girls is literally rotting from the inside out because of demons that are attached to her. I was enamored with the mystery unfolding, really tense, waiting for the story to drop something big, but then it kind of just sort of flattened out for me. I don't know, I feel like the climax was slightly botched and the resolution like kind of fizzled out with no real impact. There's also a grumpy sunshine romance that blossoms between two of the girls and I couldn't get a grasp like on their dynamic. It just didn't mesh well with me. It was also very I hate all men and I understand the feelings toward that message, um, but it could get to a tipping point for me 
and be a bit overkill and it, it kind of hits that threshold for me. Overall though, I gave this three out of five stars. I recommend this to people who enjoy body horror in their novels, necromancy, witchy reads, murder mystery, and feral lesbians, absolutely. The next book that I read was The Warden. I needed to go back to some more classic fantasy after that book and this one hit the nail on the head. What a fun fantasy this was. It actually surprised me because if I remember correctly, around the time this book released, it wasn't getting the best reviews. Some people I follow thought it was just okay, but I actually really enjoyed it. It takes place in a small backwater village that's in the middle of nowhere where our main character, who is a necromancer, is tasked to protect it. She's even living in this, like, decrepit old house that is run down. And she isn't the most thrilled about it either. But of course, things happen, and she has to investigate and solve problems. It's kind of cozy, if I'm being honest, but it also has a decent amount of action. It has this, like, older fantasy feel that I just love, where there's no... Um, intense and crazy magic system. Trust me, I do love me a good, unique, and complex magic system. Sometimes it's really nice to read just like a turn off your brain kind of fantasy. There's no elaborate lore that you have to figure out. It's very much a generic story, but in a good way. And it has a bit of a like a city dweller moving to a farm country kind of trope, which I really liked. A uh, fun, low stakes, a small adventure where our main character makes good friends along the way. A uh, very slice of life fantasy and sometimes you just need one of those every once in a while. I gave this 4 out of 5 stars and I'm excited to read book 2 which just recently came out, even though I highly doubt I'll even get to it soon because I have been absolutely terrible with continuing series. <laughs> Anyone else like that? Like the last like three or four years, I have sucked at reading like book two or book three. I read book one, four years go by and I don't remember anything and now it feels pointless to even continue with the series. I really need to figure my shit out. And the final book that I read in June was Key Lime Sky. I made an Instagram post toward the end of June featuring this one. I love the cover and I pretty much chose to read it because of it. This is being promoted as a cozy sci-fi and the cover definitely gives that. Though I'm unsure if the plot does. It's incredibly anxiety inducing. In fact, our main character has severe anxiety, gets sensory overloaded very easily, and you just feel that. It only gets worse for them when weird things uh, begin to happen in the small town where they live involving aliens. And he gets by by being a blogger, basically. Um, he writes reviews for pies, um, hence that clever title. And that part was very interesting and very relatable. Now, the environment in this falls into like the realm of Fallout, where it's set in the future where you can take pictures with your eyes and even upload them onto the internet with your eyes. <laughs> but everything seemed very 1950s coded and you kind of get that vibe from the cover. I don't think it actually takes place in the 1950s, but maybe just like the small backwater town it takes place in. It just gave me that vibe. But yeah, um, Alien Invasion, which also reminded me a lot of that movie, No One Will Save You. Very strange movie, but there was a lot of similarities. This began really fun. I got so into it. The writing is great. In fact, I plan to read this author's previous book, which I own, because I just melted into their writing. Aha! I found it in the dark depths of my bookshelf. World running down. I think this is a cozy dystopian? But yeah, I want to read this one by uh, the same author. There is a very prominent romance that occurs. It is a gay romance with some very spicy scenes. I wanna mention that because I know some of you might be looking for more of those. Um, it's no secret romance popping up in a book can actually ruin the whole thing for me. And though this definitely didn't ruin it, um, it did take away a little from the really cool alien aspect for me. I was so into that mystery and this book is shorter, so there's very limited time. But you know, romance, it's, it's gotta take up some screen time. Um, I'm trying not to sound like I'm some bitter person and I do agree our main character definitely needed a companion to face all of these crazy things that was happening. Overall, I gave this 3.5 out of 5 stars. This is my most conflicted rating of the month, I think, because I did enjoy it, but it doesn't like fully feel like a 4 star read. So... 3.5. Oh, I'm still conflicted by it. Maybe a 3.75. Maybe that would fit 
how I feel more. Who knows? Alrighty, so those are all the books that I read throughout the month of June. It might not seem like that many books, but I'm very happy with what I read. I have since started my first book of July. Sorry, I had to go up and actually grab it, which is Foul Days. I'm not very far into it, but you can look forward to my review for that in my next reading wrap up. So that's going to be it for me. Let me know what you read in June because I would love to know what was your favorite book? What was your most dis disappointing book? Uh, like this video before you go. Subscribe if you're not. I'd love to have you here and be sure to check out that BetterHelp offer, which is linked down below in the description box. And until I meet again, happy reading.